everyone, welcome to the last session. So as we announced yesterday, we are going to have a round of lightning talks. So now is your chance to have your five minute elevator pitch to tell like your colleagues and friends something interesting like a productivity hack or the project you're working on. So as I said, how this works is it's first come first serve. I've got one slide submission so far, but of course everyone can make up something on the fly. So you can talk about anything except for over five minutes. That's generally the rule. So who, was, who wants to present something? Then please come up to the front row, and then we go in order. <laughs> so I know, Marco, you have something prepared. <laughs> Otherwise, well, then it's Marco first. Oops, not this one. Thank you. I would like to talk about uh, um, system containers where there is a root user and it is untrusted. I have been discussing this in the past few years at this conference with many people and usually uh, I'm told that uh, this is uh, insecure but then there is a lot of hand waving and there is uh, never um, a full explanation of why. Uh, you may want to take this as a challenge uh, I will probably uh, lose it, but I hope that we will learn something useful in the process. So, uh, my little experiment, I used the uh, Debian stable system, so slightly old system D and kernels, uh, and spawn to create a container. And uh, in the container there is uh, another normal Debian system uh, uh, built with the bootstrap, which is booted uh, the, usual, the usual way. Uh, there, the idea is that uh, whoever has root uh, in the container should not be able to escape to the main system. Uh, I think that it will be useful to identify two classes uh, of vulnerabilities, just uh, a plain uh, uh, denial of service like crashing the system or rebooting it, something like that and actual access to the host system. This is the configuration. As you can see, private users, so uh, user namespaces, R root user inside the container is not the real user, the real uh, root user of the host system. I drop uh, uh, some capabilities which uh, I felt uh, would be insecure. Uh, most obvious is Capsys admin, which is root equivalent. Uh, Capsys module still root equivalent, and others that uh, I felt they were not needed in for a normal system. Uh, are still left uh, quite a few uh, other capabilities. I'm still not totally sure about. Uh, uh, CAPF set ID, which allows uh, setting file system capabilities. Uh, uh, I've learned today that uh, uh, there is some work in recent kernels that uh, allows uh, virtualizing that with uh, user namespaces. But anyway, if that's a problem, it can be uh, removed easily because at least uh, Debian systems uh, can work uh, as well without uh, uh, file system capabilities. Temporary file system is a workaround because uh, at some point uh, systemd expects to mount uh, uh, tempfs over there, but it cannot because uh, uh, the ability to mount and unmount file systems has been removed uh, by removing the associated capability. So uh, I mount, uh, I have and spawn mount one, and this works around the problem. When I start uh, uh, the container, there are uh, uh, a few errors. The f uh, first two are totally cosmetic. Uh, and spawn already sets uh, the um, container host name, so it does not matter that systemd cannot do it again. Uh, second error does not matter. This is uh, uh, a setting which is system-wide, and it has already been set uh, uh, by the uh, host system, systemd. The other two, the, well, there are uh, then a few errors, like the last two ones, uh, about uh, uh, ass assessing some C, uh, C groups. I'm not sure about that, but the system still appears to work. 
So I would like to know from you if uh, this container uh, is secure uh, or is it possible to escape uh, from it to the host system? And if it is possible, why? Uh, can we work around this uh, uh, with the current kernel features or not? Because uh, I think that this is a pretty useful feature that uh, should be supported. Thank you. It's up to you now. Yeah, uh, I expect I expect that somebody will have uh, uh, will will tell me how they plan to ex to escape uh, this container. Please update your kernel. You are on port uh, port nine zero. Hang on. Okay. Yes, that's four nine zero is the kernel in Debian stable. Please update your kernel. That one's basically you're basically dead. If I if I can uh, access um, local TCP calls, if I can access um, uh, if I can execute ELF binaries, uh, this kernel has known issues. You should be on four nine one hundred and twenty years at least. Uh, yes, but it does not matter because uh, that's just the the Debian version. Uh, security patches are applied on the on the inter. No, no, they don't count as something. Uh, uh, irrelevant detail. Okay. But yeah, but otherwise, I think Stefan Graber has just uh, done a talk about like uh, LXD and how to do user containers, like non-root containers, and I guess he has a lot of answers about that too, like how to use seccom filters and what to exclude. So, but uh, thanks for that experiment. <laughs> Nobody else wants to go, then I uh, will go next. So I'm Martin Pitt. I work in the cockpit team. And as you see in my very carefully designed nice slides here, we are all over design. <laughs> Actually, so cockpit, if you don't know it, it is a Linux session in a web browser. So essentially, it allows you to administ like administer your, your Linux servers from a web browser. And in order to do this, we talk about uh, we talk to about a hundred system APIs ranging from user add, shadow, the Docker uh, socket, or like the UDISCs, um, Dbus API, systemd, you name it. And we test on more than a dozen of operating system, like every single change. And we run hundreds of test cases. And as you can imagine, with this combinatorial explosion, we essentially test all of these systems a lot. And we find a lot of bugs. And I want to show you how we find and, and track those. So this is a pull request where like an automatic bot uh, rebuilds a fresh image of Fedora 27 in that case. That happens about once a week for like all of these operating systems. And this is the source where we find a lot of problems. So in this case, we see here like the first naive attempt just failed. There, was a f there, there were some test failures. So uh, then, of course, a human has to look into this. So you stare at this for a while and figure out what the problem is. So in this case, it was a regression in SL Linux. So the next step that we do, we are good citizens. We file the bug downstream to the place where it belongs. So in this case, to the Fedora SL Linux policy. So you, we find a reproducer and describe the problem, et cetera, et cetera. And so the trick is we file then an upstream issue that essentially reference this downstream report so that we have a pointer and we can essentially link uh, to all of these downstream reports to Ubuntu, to Debian, to RHEL, to Fedora, you name it. And we have them all in a kind of GitHub issue database on our side in Cockpit. And we give them this special non-issue. And, and then we essentially create a pattern which we call a naughty override that looks at the test output, and if the pattern for this override matches, we know that like, we hit this bug in this operating system. So it applies to Fedora 27, and it is issue 9507. So whenever our bots then encounter, uh, encounter this particular issue, they file an update to this, uh, to, to this GitHub issue with the exact test output, and we have the pointers to the logs and artifacts and core dumps and whatnot. We have the particular time. 
And what this allows us to do is we can automatically recognize it once the bugs get fixed, because otherwise these known issues would just pile up over time. So we see there's been a lot of those. So regularly, one, another bot uh, goes to all of these issues and checks when it last happened. And if it didn't happen for three weeks, then it proposes to close these. So, and once again, of course, a human has to confirm these. So I see, okay, hasn't been, looked, hasn't been uh, occurring in three days. So I can check the downstream bug and see, yeah, indeed, there was an update here. So, and that was supposed to close the bug. And now we have proof that it doesn't happen anymore because on our current Fedora 27 update, it doesn't happen. So we can close this and the issue goes away. And this is a problem. If we would do it manually, we would just go crazy. Like you see, these are all the own, only known issues. So at the moment, we are tracking 49 regressions in some operating system. And the 123, they got closed recently. So this allows us to master this thing at scale without having any human effort, which is not strictly necessary. So thanks. <laughs> So next up, Dan Walsh. You want to use one? to my talk earlier I was talking about Podman I also mentioned Builda um, so let's um, so anyways this is uh, now and die by he's on my team and um, uh, about a year and a half ago at DevConf we were sitting there and we we're talking he's the uh, maintainer of container storage and while we were talking about container storage I was basically telling him why I don't like Dockerfile um, the biggest problem to me with Dockerfile is it forces all of the um, tools to build the container have to be inside the container image. Um, so basically you end up with like YUM and Python and all this stuff. If all you want to do is run a web service, why do we have all this extra content inside the container? Um, so I, we were talking about uh, container storage and I basically said, you know, why can't I just have core utilities for um, for containers. So I basically wanted just a bash capability, give me a directory, I put content in the directory, and I make a container image out of it, and I push it to a container registry. Um, so he asked me, um, so he said, yeah, we could probably do something. And actually, this was like the first day of the conference, and the third day of the conference, he actually demonstrated it. Um, but he asked me what to call it, and of course I told him, just, I said, I don't know, I can't name things, just call it Builder. So of course he... Um, made fun of me and he uh, created Builder, um, made fun of my accent. So what, what can you do with Builder? Um, so Builder is now a product in our suite. Um, this is actually the, um, the latest coloring book. We represent it as a dog. Um, it's a Boston Terrier for anybody that wants to know. And I think it looks just like Nalan. So, uh, uh, but anyways, it's a, a Builder is a core utilities for uh, building container images. Um, that's the way I like to describe it. Um, and so the, one of the, Big commands you can do is you can do builder from uh, Fedora. So this is based on the Docker file thing, but basically from this will go out uh, using containers image and pull, in it, pull the Fedora image off of a container registry, store it on top of copy on write, usually, um, usually over LAFS, um, and actually creates what's called a builder container. This is somewhat different than uh, other types of containers. It's an overused term. Um, so the next po point is we mount the container. So there's a build a mount command. This returns a, a mount point where the container is mounted. Um, quick segue, in Docker, there's a thing called Docker copy. And this thing actually allows you to uh, copy content from a container image to your host or from your host into a container image. So they built this really cool tool to do it called Docker copy. So I decided to build my own tool. 
Um, I called it copy. Um, and so you're able to copy content from the host into the container, or you can copy content in the container out to the host. Um, but I didn't stop there. I also created uh, DNF. Uh, uh, sometimes I call it yum, sometimes DNF, and you can actually install root, you know, install into the container directly. Uh, didn't stop there. We also created make. Um, so you can do make install, dester, and you put it into the container. Um, and uh, so uh, when you're done putting your content inside the container, and of course nothing goes in the container except what you, you know, put into it. There's no extra stuff. You can do build a config, and this sets all these other fields that you see inside the Docker file, like the entry point, commands, environmental variables you want set. Basically, it configures the uh, image spec. When you're done with that, you call build a commit, and that actually takes the container and build, creates a local image on your system. Uh, once you're done with that, you can push the container image from your host to any of your favorite container registries, uh, moves it up, and basically this image is as small as possible based on packages, the amount of packages that you're going to put in there. You can put a single binary in. You can do whatever you want. Um, so if anybody came earlier, anytime you see red on the screen, you have to say it. Well, of course, we support Dockerfile because that's what everybody wants you to do. So we support Dockerfile. We have build, build a build using Dockerfile. Uh, of course, we use a shorter name for that because we're lazy engineers, and we call build a bud. And of course, Anheuser Brush does not have any rights on that name. So we use build a bud, which uses supports Dockerfile. Um, Actually, it does. I wrote a big scripting language for it. Um, it's, uh, this is one of my proudest works. Um, I wrote Bash. Um, so you can actually build containers using uh, Bash. Um, and, and the really interesting thing is the way we can run and build containers, there's no daemon, there's not, no, no, no way. The way we can share information is I built this really cool thing. It's called a file system. Okay, and I, I have lots of different versions of it, but you can basically share storage between containers and between processes. You can have Podman, Builder, Cryo, all these different tools using it. So anyways, that's Builder as quickly as I could do. I don't know if I did in five minutes, but uh, thanks. Oh, does anyone else want to go? <laughs> Otherwise, then, yeah, let's have another coffee for, for the closing session, I suppose. Thanks.